I'm a research fellow at the University of Manchester, but I'm based at Diamond the whole time and I get to work really closely with the scientists there. So it's a very fortunate place to be based in, in the whole campus in that environment, surrounded by the beamline scientists that you can talk to every day and, and learn from them, develop the beamline, bridging that link between the facility that Diamond is for users and for the, the university and all the academics and students we have in Manchester. Physics I found is a really fascinating subject because it's such a diverse subject. It's, you're doing things from everything from the scale of the universe, looking through telescopes to looking at atoms and, and smaller. Um, and it's, it's a very hands-on and nuts and bolts as well as doing a lot of maths and theoretical stuff. So it's, it was the, the, that diverse range of physics that I found really exciting. And that's why I chose to do physics at university. It goes right back to being at school and having some really inspirational teachers. I remember when I was nine or ten, had a wonderful teacher at primary school who was really science focused and introduced us to the idea of doing experiments and asking our own questions and really learning by discovery rather than just taking things for granted that the teacher tells you and um, looking to test hypotheses and um, explore the world around you so it was, it was a, a great opportunity to 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 be exposed to some quite difficult ideas for for young children but i think children just like exploring and taking kind of curiosity and just and just messing around with things that maybe how it's not designed to be done because that's the great thing about science you can explore and, and I remember getting an electricity kit as a when I was about nine or ten and using that to build circuits with buzzers and building a little alarm system for my bedroom and kind of using science for that and just just kind of going away up to my bedroom by myself and doing it I just enjoyed it. I wasn't really thinking about my, my career and my future. It's just, it's what I enjoyed. And because you enjoy something, you tend to get quite good at it because you're, you're kind of spending a lot of time thinking about it. For my undergraduate project, we went to the SRF, which is the Synchrotron in Grenoble in France. I was reading through all the projects you can do in the final year of your degree. And I just found this one that was uh, using synchrotrons to collect data on and magnetic materials and it just sounded really exciting to be using a big facility like a synchrotron and also collecting some data and it sounded like you could something you could do within within that, that year you have for your project in the final year and it was a really exciting time to to travel to the synchrotron and i just remember turning up to the synchrotron for the first time and seeing the, the, the scale of the place and it was a fantastic location in the mountains and it's this i've never seen a facility so big this this huge kind of donut in the uh, between the rivers. It was really exciting at that age. Um, and it was obviously the, the academics and the professors I was working with, they'd seen it all before, but as a, as a student, it's a, quite an amazing place, the scale of the science. And you don't see that when, you, when you're doing your science experiments in university, it's all quite in, in a small lab in the building, but I was, I was mainly struck by the diversity and the variety of things going on there. Cause you walk around the building and there's, there's biologists and physicists and chemists and all kinds of different different work going on. As I was doing my PhD, we saw that Diamond was opening whilst I was still doing my research. So we took the opportunity to apply to use this brand new facility and this really exciting beam line there to look at magnetic sensors. And um, I was one of the first users when it opened in 2007. And we, we came, it was a brand new facility and there were only a handful of experiments up and running at that time, but we took uh, some really good data and published a paper on these results. It was a very exciting time with everything of smelling of fresh paint and being a, a new facility here. Working with the next generation of researchers and scientists is a real privilege and we see people develop over time from their PhD becoming researchers and then becoming academics and even coming to work at Diamond as, as members of staff here. So it's a, it's a fantastic place to develop your experience of science. So I've been really fortunate to work in a, in a field of X-ray imaging where you can put lots of different materials there. So we've looked at everything from looking at how batteries evolve when you're charging and discharging them. Um, to looking at ice cream and how ice cream evolves as it's as it kind of freezes and, and, and thaws a little bit and see how the ice crystals grow. And I've been working with a lot of people in the field of um, regenerative medicine and biomaterials, You're looking at um, replacement tissues for, uh, for various different, for knee joints and cartilage and, and bone, and using diamond to study all these exciting areas of, of uh, medical engineering.
There's been increasing interest over the last few years in, in the quality of the air that we're breathing in the environment. And this is driven by public and, and the health concerns. It's also driven by the regulations we get set by government for, for vehicles. And this is definitely something that people are becoming a lot more aware of in the public, the, the air that they're breathing. And it's been, we've seen that this affects people's health. Five or six years ago, I, was, I started working in the area of clean air. I was working with a company that produced the filters that, that um, cut down on air pollution from vehicles. And this was a really important area. I saw that with the, the increasing urbanization and industrialization around the world, that air pollution was a, an increasing problem. And so we use these technologies to, to try and cut down on the, the particulates and the, the gases, the toxic gases in the atmosphere that we're breathing in. What's really happened over the last 10 or so years is that we've been using synchrotrons to study these in situ processes like using filters to clean the air from vehicles. And this has really enabled us to do a step change in how we understand how the materials work in these filters. We built an experiment where we could take a filter and flow particulates through this filter whilst we were taking measurements at the beamline. And doing this, we could see how the filter operates and how it takes particulates out of the air that's flowing through. You can watch things that are, that are not static. You don't have to start and stop and move the sample around. You can put the sample in front of the X-ray beam and take your measurements and watch it evolve over in dynamically in real time and see what the, on a macroscopic level where things are, are getting stuck and getting filtered and getting caught and where the, the structure of the filter is changing. And we did this using the, the neighboring facilities in the, in the research complex at Harwell and the Catalysis Hub to have everything neighboring diamond on one campus it meant that we could develop these things really closely with the beamline scientists um, because it's quite a very challenging measurement to take anything where you're trying to do something that's potentially toxic in the in the environment of a, an in situ um, doing an in situ measurement in the in the beamline. We spent a number of years looking at um, particulates from combustion and vehicle emissions, and then when the pandemic came across, I was fortunate to be working in an area that was related to um, clean air and, and and the quality of the air we breathe. So when we saw that there was research being um, undertaken by various government agencies and universities to look at the measures to mitigate against the pandemic. We realised that we had great technique and capability to look at how um, aerosols spread viruses uh, in the population. So we were able to take the, the technologies and the experiments we devised and started taking sections from face masks and filters and we put these in our, our in situ flow cells that we could place on the beamline and then we flowed particulates through the filters to understand how the filters worked, how effective they were at different sizes of particulates, how they worked with different levels of humidity, how they trapped particulates as we simulated uh, inhaling and exhaling through the material. So we were really trying to simulate what it's like to, to wear a mask for a period of time and observe how they degraded over time and how effective they were at addressing different types of particulates. And so we could really understand the difference between the regulated face masks and the the face coverings that a lot of people were using made out of cloth and whether the, the face masks that were being used were most suitable for the, the challenges of the pandemic. The quality of the air we breathe is an ever more concerning challenge. Um, there are sources of pollution that um, come from all kinds of sources of combustion, from industry, from agriculture, and understanding the nature of those particulates and the pollution and that affects their toxicity. So using diamond, we can look at the, the, the structure and the chemistry and the size of these materials that we're breathing in. And the challenge will be in the future addressing both different sources of pollution. As we move away from combustion vehicles um, to electric vehicles, there's always going to be different sources of pollution. And also looking in different areas around the world, that different countries will move at different rates away from combustion engines. So it's a global challenge to address the, the nature of the clean air. Using the synchrotron is, is invaluable because you can, you can go faster, you can go look at things that are smaller, you can go things that are much more sensitive and take very detailed measurements, looking at the chemistry and the structure of very soft materials that are difficult to x-ray by other means. And the ability to look at things in three dimensions in a time resolved manner as they're evolving is really something that, that synchrotrons are particularly um, helpful for.
the great thing about coming to Diamond is that the light is it's, it's very bright, but it's also very coherent and collimated, which means that you can have exquisite sensitivity to the to the measurements you're trying to take. You can focus in on particular elements or particular areas of the sample and take very detailed measurements. And you can do this very quickly, which means you can watch things evolving. So if you've got a process that's changing, if you've got a, a measurement that's of something that's, that's changing due to temperature or forces being applied or you're passing current or performing some uh, in situ experiment there, then you can take these, these images um, really quickly and watch things evolve over time. In my role, I'm lucky to bridge the, bridge the gap between universities and, and Diamond. So I'm trying to link new, t new areas of science and, and build collaborations to work with Diamond. And that's always exciting when you're bringing new work to, to the place.